Freestyle the news! Then me! Uh, 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 uh. Let's get it! Catch me breaking up a fight Get my numbers up but change your promises you right Everything's a hit until they pitching you a strike Motherfuckers laughing after killing someone acting Just to check you got it right, huh? Ground shaking, I see casualties piling up I see the world breaking You should watch what you fucking cross the city might take you 11,000 dying in the flood Another hurricane about to come because the climate's a stable Alright, Hunter got his gun charged Kevin think that's so hard Impeachment about to kickstart Just please don't take that speaker out my big part That's so stark Romney failing re-election Your grandpa's grandpa running for senate and the presidency The country that gon' pull a gun on you if your dog dying And how you feel about it? Are you with Trump or with Biden? In a world where Richie's won like half of you get fired Where if it's Saudi money, your haters become your best vices So priceless, and I've asked that your baby get spiced Shutting down the government, finally that'll make them like uh, Unlikely, like two gazing scabs on a strike And we coming back but with sorrow, we just pull right things Okay, Bill! Hustin' just a liar or a peak performer Details kinda sketchy, but it's messy up in the New Yorker Russell Brandman tryna jump ahead before they write the portion Accusations coming, she was 16 with the taxi order Bad news, I wait up for the season, now they have to Get them fucking banned like the App Store did to Andrew Brand new, wrestlers and fighters about to make moves While you vaping and beetle just turning you into Peter in his Venom suit I ain't gonna retire like Miyazaki Even if these tennis cunts get mad, well they gotta watch me Stop me Fuck em, I can make it out the same scrap Save your thoughts and prayers for everybody with a jet hat Oh Hey, U.S. Tennis Association, look at me, look at me, look at me I'm the captain now Hey, thank you guys so much for watching Freestyle the News. If you like what you heard, please create a blue and a red mythical fire dragon to grab somebody and lift them into the air while the dragon sinks its teeth into its arms and then you fly up into the air and then you crush their skull down to the ground with your crazy fire powers. Quick announcement, if you've by some chance already played the story mode of a really popular game that's coming out uh, next week uh, and you hear somebody's voice at the end of the story mode um, in a song and you're like, hey, that guy should freestyle the news. Uh, I can't talk about that till the 19th. But I'm very excited to talk about that with you guys. If you're looking for a game to play next week, hey, Mortal Kombat looks really cool. Real quickly, if you like these videos, please subscribe and hit the bell so you can see when these videos go up. And in case the Tennis Association wants to take another one down, yeah, I'm not over it, man. Fuck you guys for doing that. But anyway, let's get into the breakdown because I want to get this because I'm recording this late and, and we had to redo some stuff in the episode. And we're going to start with some of the most tragic natural disasters that have hit the world in the last week, one of which actually was preventable. But if you didn't hear, earlier this week, an earthquake hit Morocco, devastating parts of Marrakech, and then a couple communities south of the city. As of right now, 3,000 people are dead, buildings are destroyed, there's an immense need for aid to go to Morocco. The earthquake was about a 6.8 on the Richter scale, it's very, very significant. And people are still searching to find survivors in absolutely destroyed communities. They need supplies, they need help. The earthquake did damage also to the Tin Mel Mosque, which is a very, very significant historical site. That already was a horrifying tragedy with, with terrible ramifications. But later in the week, a flood absolutely just destroyed the city of Derna in Libya, killing at least 11,000 people. 11,000 people. And you can see the before and after images. It's, it's fucking insane, man. Just entire green parts of the city just reduced to mud. Houses just gone, like just evaporated. And the death toll keeps rising. It is, it is one of the most horrifying tragedies, period, of the scale and in this part of the world. And what makes it even worse is it was actually preventable. There are reports of problems in the dam around Derna that burst that made all of this happen. And the thing is that dam could have been reinforced. A lot of those infrastructural problems could have been taken care of, but Libya has been in political turmoil for quite some time now. There have been efforts to repair the dam since around 2007, but ever since Gaddafi was toppled, there have just been two rival governments just constantly squabbling, and so none of that infrastructure has gotten up to code. Now, some people say because of the level of the storm that, that, that hit, the dam sort of still failed, but a lot of the critics are saying, hey, you didn't heed these warnings, and because of that, all of this death has happened. So it's a very like difficult situation, but man, like the devastation is insane and absolute, both here and in Morocco, 
loss of life is loss of life. So please, if you can, donate to Doctors Without Borders or, 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 or any of the many organizations that are trying to find aid and relief in those parts of the world. I'm going to leave some links in the description down below so you guys can donate. It's an absolutely horrifying situation. Throw some dollars their way. Help out. Okay, now on to our next story, Hassan Minhaj and Russell Brand. Now, we actually had to edit the rap this week. I had to add four bars because bombshell reports about both Russell Brand and Hassan Minhaj came out yesterday. And oh boy, oh boy. So let's start with Hassan. If you didn't know, The New Yorker recently just posted a giant profile on Hassan Minhaj. And when I say profile, I mean expose. Doubting the veracity of a lot of the comedy bits that he says in his shows. They're saying that, hey, we couldn't confirm a lot of the details that Hassan has in his shows. It feels like a lot of these bits are made up. Now, when they pressed Hassan about it, he said, yeah, some of these bits are actually made up, but there's an emotional truth in the center of it. Now, if you haven't seen Hassan's shows before, a lot of his work feels very autobiographical. It feels very anecdotal. He's talking about like instances in his life. He's talking about instances of oppression and, and things he's dealt with as a Muslim American and how it relates to all of us. And he does that in, in his other work as well. So the problem obviously here was that, hey, you're talking about oppression and stuff that you say has happened to you, but it's it's partially fabricated. You're fabricating it for effect for the show, which Hassan and Admitted. He said, like, hey, there's an emotional truth there to how I felt and what was going on, but I embellished and used a little bit of hyperbole to make my point, because the point is true, and I'm using these stories as a tool to get there, which was met with insane backlash like 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 the most culture war backlash you could get because if you don't know Hassan is a political figure and so you're going to have people immediately defending him who are big fans immediately deriding him because like oh he's super woke or he's not progressive enough a lot of people saying that like oh it, he's getting famous off of like oppression porn because that's what it feels like if you're fabricating these stories with a lot of the right wingers taking gleeful shots saying oh he fabricated all this shit. He's fugazi. He is the only funny thing he's ever done is lie about like his daughter almost getting hit with anthrax. And in addition to Hassan, Russell Brandt also got a little bit of that smoke from the press this week. He came out with a video ahead of it. He said, hey, there's some stories coming out about me. They're not true. Everything I did was consensual. The media is attacking me for telling the truth. I don't know if you know this, but Russell Brandt has gone through like a bunch of different crazy evolutions over the years. And his current one is like crazy conspiracy theorist like dude but he was saying yeah but during my time when i was in the papers and everything like that i was very promiscuous and these people are saying that i did some horrible things and i'm unequivocally denying it and it's an attack on me just because i'm saying certain things with my youtube channel and the piece came out and oh boy it was pretty bad four women have accused russell Brand of rape assaults abuse one of them was 16 at one point they said he sent a taxi to go get her and drive her to his location it was an investigation by the times the sunday times and channel four and you have everybody coming out showing pics of like you know katie perry right after she gets broken up with him over text like going up like hey russell brand's a piece of shit it's just not looking good for him online but again another culture war fire starter which is kind of where i want to go with this so my take let me address the accountability and then let me address the response so for the accountability for Hassan. Um, I, I'll be very real. Like, I'm very close to the story. I'm Indian American. I saw Hassan's, like, specials, and I had experienced those things. Like, a lot of racism growing up in Irvine. So, like, I, I felt really close to those things, and I, I do like him as a performer. There's things that he's done that I think are really, really great. And in stand-up, people do embellish the truth. They do, like, fabricate stories and, 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 and take stories, like, into these big more hyperbolic things to kind of you know make their point and, and have a little fun john mulaney does it a lot but and i hate to do it, but like hustin your whole act was like engineered to be like a truth-telling session like all of his all of his comedy and everything he plays into the fact that hey i'm telling anecdotal stories about my life like it's the truth kind of like mike barbiglia did and look yeah mike barbiglia also embellishes but Generally, like a lot of these stories were heavily about oppression, heavily about really serious things that happen. And when you have stuff like, hey, I took my daughter to the hospital because of this white powder we touched that could have been anthrax, that's a lot. And again, I'm very close to this. The story about the woman who rejected him from his first special, I related to. I literally have had to go through that issue of people saying like, oh, well, you're Muslim, so I can't date you. I've had that said to me. Another person said, uh, like, it's not God's plan. And that shit is devastating to a brown kid growing up in a very racist county post 9-11. And so I related a lot with that. And I'm cool with it being like, okay, embellished a little, but like it, 
but that girl getting harassment afterwards, that's a line I, I, I don't think is okay. And then with Russell Brand, who I was a fan of before he became like really fucking crazy. I think the allegations are pretty fucking bad and pretty damning. I think they should be taken seriously. If he's denying them and he says he has evidence against them, which he's saying he has like evidence that contradicts this, he should present it. And again, radical accountability. That's my feelings on the accusations. On the response. Look, these stories are not on the same caliber, but I'm very troubled to how the response online has been because it's been very centered around the culture war and very centered around people using it to make content for themselves. My sense is that either you are A, actually troubled by dishonest depictions of oppression and uh, sexual assault cases, or B, both of those look good to your audience, so it's about time you you get outraged about them. And that second one scares me because the way that content is made doesn't address those two issues at all. Again, I'm sorry, I'm making a nuanced point, but like that is really scary to me. And I think that is the biggest issue that we have when we're asking for accountability from people in the line, or just in general, in society. We are back to influencer culture. If you go through the Hassan Minaj and the Russell Brand responses, you'll see the typical lines drawn. Conservatives feeling like, oh, they're just after Russell because the MSM doesn't like him speaking the truth about vaccines. If you go after Hassan, they're like, well, why haven't you asked Jim Gaffigan or anybody else about these things? And look, I think the distinction needs to be made. Activism is important. People should be held accountable for bad behavior. But there is a lot of bad faith and self-servience in that accountability going on, which is which does scare me just specifically for these two stories because these two people are giant Hollywood stars who are both politically involved on either side of the aisle and they are both experiencing the most typical lines of attack for a culture war tool. Like it's just being used as a giant cudgel. I know Hassan can be pretty insufferable. I know Russell Brand can be pretty insufferable and fucking crazy. The messiness of this all, it feels, it feels less like we need to fix these problems and more like a gossip column, which is, which is fucking scary. Clarify something. It's like early here uh, and it's a few hours before I post, but um, I think my issue that I'm trying to talk about is performative activism. I don't like when people really engage with the subject just because it's going to help their brand as opposed to like trying to like be activist about that subject like you don't care as much about sexual assault as much as you do people clicking on your article about sexual assault that's weird to me like you should care that that issue gets eliminated like the people are are okay and and, and are not having to deal with that kind of stuff so that's kind of what i'm saying i think just like the way we've built our culture is that's the extent of everybody's like Oh, this is how I'm helping the world is I'm shit talking Hassan Minaj because of his comedy specials or, and stuff like that. And again, those people deserve to be accountable, but you got to do more than just shit talk on Twitter. But anyway, that's my take. That's how I feel about this kind of stuff. How do you feel? How do you feel about Hassan? How do you feel about Russell Brand? Let me know in the comments below. But that's going to do it for today's episode. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm going to have a lot of cool things to talk about this week. So stay tuned and I'll see y'all next Sunday. Let's go!